Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 138, maybe, of the Spirit Sundays podcast. I'm joined by uh, by Greeley. Welcome back, man. Thank you, man. It's good to be back. Yeah, third third one so yeah, far. Officially. Yeah. Was, Sorry, this one, there's no visuals on this one. I'm just recording it on my phone. It's a tour podcast, so it's a little bit shit. You guys know how it is. You're used to it. Um, I'm going to bring my camera on future things, but uh, today we have to save... Bit of room for the, for merch because we're doing some big shows, but uh, greeley has been doing the support act for just about every show. You've yeah. been killing it. Come a long way since. Uh, I mean, last time you were on the podcast, you were talking about starting comedy and how you kind of just yeah. started. I think. Yeah. And I'm sure thing. Oh no no no! Oh, the thing I've done a bit of comedy when we caught up last was in Melbourne. So after your show, so I first supported you in, in your last tour. Mm. That was your last tour, eh? Yeah, that was my last one 18 months ago. Yeah. And that was like, was that your first gig? That was my first stand-up gig. Yeah. And um, well, I was just working the door for you, and I told you the story about Dazza burning down the flat, and you are like, yeah, man, just tell that at my gig. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it went pretty well. Yeah. Dazza's doing pretty well these days. That's good. Yeah, but um, yeah, man. And then I think it was about four or five months after that, I just talked about getting into it, and then I went to a Steve Hughes show, mm. and... Um, Met a few of the local comedians in Hobart, and then I went down to a couple of local nights and just watched it. Yeah. And um, I was talking to comedians. They're like, "Oh, so you're going to get up there?" I was like, "Yeah, well, I've done it before with my mate Lewis." Yeah. <laughs> but um, and then one comedian said to me, "Well, fucking do it then." I was like, "True." So I just started doing nights. You know, yeah. just hitting up five minute spots in Hobart and doing new material nights and kind of working my way up the small ladder that is the Tasmanian comedy scene. <laughs> yeah. Two but steps, no. just a step ladder. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, nah, it's been awesome, man. And, you know, coming on this tour with you and ha- having this opportunity to have this experience in front of, you know, a massive audience that is also a bunch of fucking mad cunts that are just down and up for it. You know what I yeah. mean? There's so many comedy rooms in Australia that it just feels quite awkward. And, um, you know, you really have to work them. But I feel your crowd is, is, they're putting in the work a lot as well, you know? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's different. There's like, there's, I think there's like three different types of rooms. There's like open mic room where people are there, not for comedy, and they go, oh, comedy, ah, oh, I might pay attention if it's good. Yeah. And then it's never good because they're not paying attention. Yeah. And then the second level is like comedy clubs where people are there for comedy, but they're not there for you. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, comedy, so... But those ones are good, but you run the risk of like offending people because it's like just so many different yeah, it's types just the, of people. The plain comedy. Yeah, yeah. yeah I like yeah. comedy, but I don't like this type of joke or that type of joke. Yeah. Uh, and then the best type is like cunts that are there for you. Like I'm yeah. coming to see Lewis. Yeah. Or or even just being in the audience of those crowds, you're there to see one comedian. They're the best crowds because they're like interesting. Well, it's like a group of people. They know what type of humour they like and they know what to expect so they're like I'm going to get this type of stuff and I'm, so I'm going to love it awesome man have you ever had any um, experience similar experience supporting anyone else that's had an audience just to come see them yeah so yeah. Uh, I've uh, I've opened up for Luke uh, and that that was great uh, I've also opened up for the Big Les show yeah. and that was good. That one was a little bit different because I think the audience wasn't too sure what to expect because yeah. obviously they're animators. So they were like, I think this is a Q&A that might be a little bit funny, which is what it was. So yeah. then I came out and I was like, there's also stand up. <laughs> so that was a bit of a shift, but I, I ended up doing really well there. Um, but in terms of like, Oh, I haven't. I haven't actually opened up for anyone doing a particularly big room or anything like that. I'd really love to do it because yeah. I think it'd be really fun. Like I think one of these days, I'd, I'd love to open for Frenchie or yep. or uh, other people that are coming. Just whenever they're in Melbourne, I just try and hit people up and yeah. and uh, sneak a support slot in. Yeah, yeah. I just like I don't know. I just think it's kind of cool. And you know, bringing Lachlan Fairbairn out in Adelaide is like a yeah. nice little surprise. Like it's it's cool. Like because we're all we're all over the country, but we're all mates and we all yeah. you know like each other's comedy. So it's kind of cool just having surprise guests or or just jumping on the support for no reason. And yeah. it's cool. No, it was cool to meet Lachlan and see see him. You know, I know he's only new in it, but he's you can tell he's got a bright future ahead of him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, yeah, it was cool because he's, he's only, he, I don't think he's even been doing it for a year yet. So he's like really jumping in the deep end with yeah. like doing big theatres and stuff and so, opening. And he was saying to me, like, he's had no other stage experience. So, mm. you know, he, he's gone straight in the deep end. For me, it was like, 
I've had stage experience for so long yeah. to the point where like I've, I can be doing a hip hop show and I just don't get any nerves. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting transitioning from that sort of crowd into this one. I feel like the the quietness of the crowd compared to a thousand drunk rowdy people. Yeah. It makes me more nervous. You yeah. know what I mean? Where some people, they see a thousand drunk rowdy people, they'd be like, oh shit. You know? yeah. Whereas I see even 200 people sitting in chairs and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> like, well, yeah, no, yeah, I know what you mean because I came, because I, I opened and I helped host that rap battle event that you yeah. put on and that was about 400 people. Yeah, 450, ex- I think. 450, exact opposite of my crowd. They were all drunk, yeah. rowdy, like, fucking yeah, rap battles, SA, bro. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's yeah. Real, really great tension of oh, is this going to be a good event or will there be a brawl? <laughs> and I'm going on there and like I found like, because everyone's like kind of drinking and talking to their friends and like generally with music, a lot of the time you just kind of ignore the support act and maybe pay attention a little bit. Yeah. But when the support act is not music, it's some guy screaming jokes. Yeah, it was yeah. very, it was very interesting. Like just, I, I found I had to like really like, Hello, I'm a comedian here on my jokes. <laughs> like I had to, I've never like yelled that loud, but that's how yeah. you had to get it in across to everyone and and but it was great. Yeah, and I I know what you mean. Like that made me go, "Fuck, this is going this is so different because they're like yeah. loud and rowdy yeah. and standing up too was so weird to perform to." Yeah, 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 fully. Yeah. Mm. Whereas um I know I've, I've done just a bit of offhand stand up at a couple of cursor shows, you know, for a bit yeah. around, like I did I think I did um, uh, the story about my mate that had butted Tony Abbott at the Cursor show and yeah. they were fucking up for it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I was like, yeah, so my mate had butted Tony Abbott and just, bro, you know what I mean? And <laughs> yeah. everyone say, free Astro, free <laughs> Astro, you know? And I do, I really like um, fucking around in those uh, situations because, yeah, you can find out people's too drunk or too cooked in the crowd, but as long as you just call them on it, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I remember even... At the reunion, there was one guy that threw his um, and I threw out a t-shirt, and he tried to grab it, and I fucking wrecked the camera. Yeah, and I just scolded him like an angry parent, like you've ruined fucking Christmas. Yeah. And everyone lost their shit. You know yeah. what I mean? It was um, I do like working in those uh, environments, but it is, man, it's so cool to like, yeah, do it. Like last night, the Adelaide show with the theatre, and you know, two hundred people, and they were crowd, they were up for it. It like, was a fucking really good show last night. Yeah, man, it was amazing. Yeah, I'm still buzzing from it. It was it was so interesting watching. Yeah, like from the last couple of shows of watching your material, you know, you work on it and and like me becoming feel familiar with it as well. Yeah, and then to watch you take that up into a big theater in front of two hundred people because this is the first big show with the. I think the biggest one we did was like a hundred something, yeah. and it was kind of a bar kind of a stage. Yeah. So, but this one was like a proper theater with like yeah heaps of people there so it's it's different i feel like the show i feel that's when i did tonight i'm like oh i've written a show for a theater i think yeah yeah i I feel like (laughs) the um the depth of your jokes work well across a wide audience in that sense you know Mm. what i mean it's small rooms you know people yeah are always aware of who who's next to them and things like that yeah, especially when you're talking like about really fuck stuff. Like I'd say this show is probably the, the furthest I've gone into, yeah. the, into the depths of like dark the, material. The depths of depravity. <laughs> <laughs> like just, it's like, uh, I, it was funny. I saw this article on BuzzFeed that was like list of things that we shouldn't ever joke about and like reasons why. And I just scrim skim through the list and I swear it looked like my set list. <laughs> I was like, I've got that one. I did that one. I go there. The top 10. Oops, yeah, I'm just fucking breaking all of the, all of the BuzzFeed rules. So I was like, fuck, well, BuzzFeed's going to hate this one. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's been really cool because, I don't know, I like, I like doing dangerous stuff because it's harder. It's, yeah. like, it's like walking a tightrope of like, you know, you'll... Like, I do a bit at the end of the show. I won't ruin it for people who haven't seen it, but, like, at the end of the show, it's, like... It's basically, I'm telling people I'm not doing this, but I'm definitely doing it. Yeah. And and it's, like... I don't know. It just gets really fucked, and it's cool to to pull that off, I suppose. Yeah, and to walk that line. Yeah. Like, one thing I've found is that... And I really like doing it, is building the tension in the room. I'm the yeah. same. I like walking that line and pushing that edge to making people feel really uncomfortable... And then you give them the payoff, and yeah. there comes a relief of that uncomfortable feeling. You know, yeah, yeah I want to make them feel as uncomfortable as 
possible before yeah. I hit them with that relief. You know, even if half the room doesn't get it, mm. the tension's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's cool though having you open. You're bringing like this real hip hop element to to my shows, like getting people to chant and yeah, and like cheer. And I think like. <laughs> Last night I heard, give it up for bongs, everyone. <laughs> it's like, that's something about that, that one I would never anticipate being yelled at at one of my shows. Give it up for bongs, ladies and gentlemen. And if everyone did, it was Adelaide's. And they're like, woo, bongs. Yeah, they loved it, man. Yeah. They really enjoyed it. And, um, yeah. It was pretty interesting, man. I had a lot of people asking me about uh, different stuff that I've spoken about on the podcast before. Like, even in Hobart, a couple of guys were asking me about Dazza. And, um, <laughs> and mostly I've had uh, been hit up about Spider Lad. Yeah, sp- people have been obsessed with Spider Lad. I just put in the, in the Facebook group now that, that um, you're coming on the podcast and part two of Spider Lad's going to be revealed. And oh, it's shit. like, fuck, Spider Lad. Spider Lad. Oh, Spider Lad. So we do a quick recap of the original tale? Yeah, if you want. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. So, <laughs> in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> in a nutshell one of Grilly's mates was dressing up as Spider-Man to rob ice dealers yeah <laughs> yeah just for something to do yeah he was bored yeah and he didn't have much much to do so he just fucking got on the pingers and I dressed up as Spider-Man and started rolling cunts for their um their drugs and um then he'd give him a pinger and and run away. And then um, afterwards, he'd harass them and just ask them to catch up again. <laughs> I'm not sure if I told that part of the story last time, but he That's... used to, he literally, as soon as he got home from robbing them, he'd start calling them up. He's <laughs> <laughs> got a fucking death wish. And he'd just be like, hey, bro, let's catch up. Come on. Come on. We're good mates. Come on. Until so they just, like, leave me the fuck alone. Like, I didn't want their money. They just want to be left alone. Yeah, well, I feel like if someone dressed up as Spider-Man robbed me of all my eyes and then gave me a pinger, I'd be like, not mine, mate. <laughs> I don't want to see him again. He can keep it, whatever he took. <laughs> but yeah, I caught up with Spider-Lad um, when he told me these stories when, after he got out of jail and I went over to the Melbourne show for the Curses show that got cancelled. Mm. And I, so we caught up with him. We hung out for the night and... Um, got pretty loose and then um i went back i came i went over to perth and i did like a little comedy room tour mm. and kind of did a little bit in victoria yeah and over in perth i did a bunch of rooms over there as well and um and so i came back to tassie and you know he hit me up he's like let's catch up next week for the cursor show you know yeah. let's do it again and i'm like fuck yeah because like after the spider lad weekend <laughs> oh man I, my side was hurting it was good for my soul yeah and um so you know i was looking forward to catching up with it again and the day before I fucking got to Melbourne. A mate sends me a news article. <laughs> Get it up. And Get it up and play it. And, <laughs> and, it tur- and it turns out by the time I got to Melbourne, Spider Lad was back in jail. Wait till you guys hear the news. This is from what, Channel 7? I think so. So this is on television. So instead of explaining how Spider Lad ended up in jail, we'll just let Channel 7 handle it. Or at least it's getting it up. But fuck, I died when I heard this. But yeah, Spider-Lads had a, had a giant mythos on the podcast. Everyone mate. asked about it. I'm like, I don't know, it's Grealies, mate. Ask it, he's the real deal. The Spider-Lad. And um, you can't better watch out. All right, I've got this video. So um, yeah, so the, the day before I went to catch up with Spider-Lad, son, up full as well, someone um, sends me this video. on a sec. I'll fucking crank it up. Well, it's been a terrifying start to the day for one young couple living here in Melbourne's east, waking to the sound of three men trying to force their way into their home, armed with hammers, a baseball bat and a machete. The young woman living here woke just before six this morning when one of the offenders accidentally rang the doorbell. (laughs) 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 The world's worst thing. Tried to burgle a house and accidentally rang the doorbell. <laughs> Who the fuck does that? All right, okay, we'll keep the video going. There's, there's more. There's more. Doorbell. The three men proceeded to try and break through the back gate, but police arrived within minutes, finding them in the front yard using OC spray to detain one of the men who tried to fight them off. <laughs> <laughs> Ring the doorbell and then punch the cops. World's best. Thing. <laughs> Fuck, Peter Parker strikes again. There's more, there's more. I have spoken to residents 
this morning. They're too shaken at the moment to speak on camera, but they're grateful police arrived before the men could get inside. They say the random attack has left them baffled, but not surprised, saying crime in Mitcham has skyrocketed in recent months. Police spent more than an hour this morning combing through the couple's property, collecting broken plastic from the driveway, a shattered doorbell, and wiping for fingerprints. A 29-year-old... Well, he yeah. smashed the doorbell? What was that? Did he smash the doorbell? I don't, a shattered yeah, maybe, doorbell? Maybe, maybe he did, but, um, yeah, so that, that's... <laughs> What the fuck did he do then? Like, I don't ring the doorbell. No worries, man. I'll smash it so there's no chance of that happening. <laughs> Ding <laughs> dong. <laughs> fuck. Bomb. Ah, oh, shit. It's the cops. No worries, man. I'll punch him off. Ah, pepper spray. <laughs> fuck, they're lucky. No, they didn't call Dr. Octopus. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Yeah, so, um... Spider-Lad's doing well. So he's, so he's, he's back in jail. <laughs> <laughs> And I miss him. I miss him dearly. Oh, I really funny. do. Um, but I did, I did get a call from him. I, I have I, met him and it surprised me that he was out there doing all this shit. Oh, he seems so mellow. Oh, he's a, he's a lovely fella. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I got... He puts I, on the mask. Yeah, but no, I got a call from him, from jail, and, um, and I asked him about it. I was like, what the fuck happened, man? <laughs> 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 and, he's, and it turns out it wasn't Spider Lad that rung the doorbell. Right, of course. No, it was Bat Lad. Fucking Bat Lad. Super Lad. It was the other two. It was the other two. Was but um, pepper sprays is kryptonite. Yeah, and, and, and it wasn't a random attack, I don't think. But um, yeah, so Spider Lad, um, I hope to hear from him soon, and the adventure will continue. <laughs> I can't wait for part three. Part yeah, three, that's so fucking funny. Yeah, <laughs> but it's good to good to hear that he's out there hustling some way yeah. or another. I was doing his thing, like the world's shit is Avengers. Yeah, <laughs> the lad Avengers, or <laughs> well, the world's best. Yeah, <laughs> man, maybe lads are like way worse than any fucking villain ever. <laughs> Can you imagine like a, a like a comic book esque Marvel lad movie? Yeah, that'd be yeah. fucking sick. You'd have like. What is that? Uh, fuck my shit phone dying. <laughs> yeah. You have like Peter Parker on the pit, obviously. He'd be the leader. And instead of like Iron Man, you'd have Meth Man. <laughs> you Iron Man on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's wearing a whole suit that's just connected to needles that go straight into his arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lot you could work with there, really. Well, yeah, it's been good. It's been good having you on tour, and and like it's it's really cool seeing your material because that's that get better as well. I think that's the best thing about having other comedians on tour is is you just help each other get better, and you yeah. notice you're like, man, it was better when you did that, and better than last night than when you did that. Yeah. So it's it's been really cool, and like I felt, I mean, I was saying on the last episode, I felt like, I felt like before I did. Before I started the tour, this is the least confident in a show I've ever felt. Really? Yeah, I felt like, oh, that's not... I think it's because I put so much effort into the comedy special. Like, yeah, I spent yeah. four years on the special and then one year on this. And so I was like, I was like, fuck, I don't know if this is going to live up to it. But then, like, especially now, after last night, I'm like, oh, fuck, it's really good. Yeah. So Man, I'm it's, happy um, with it. Yeah, like, mm. and I guess, I mean, that, that doubt comes with the preparation, you know. Like, mm. I feel... It's, it's a similar thing when I write... I mean, it's not an hour of comedy, but when I write a hip hop song, like I can spend a few months really considering the angle I want to take, the concept yeah. I want to try and nail, how I'm going to paint the picture, and um, by the end of it, when I put it out, I'm doing my head in over it, you know, and I'm like, oh, what about this? Mm. And sometimes I can spend so much effort on one track, do an amazing video clip that I'm really happy with, put it up online, and it doesn't do that well. Yeah. And then sometimes, like, my most successful kind of track that's gotten me, the, you know, like, the one that most people know, I wrote it in, like, a week yeah. of, like, staying up all night, recorded it on the Saturday morning, s filmed a one-take video sitting in a chair, yeah. uploaded it that Arvo. Didn't think twice, you know mm. what I mean? It was completely like, yeah, finish writing, done, go record, out. And yeah. it popped off, you know what I mean? So it's, it's so interesting... Yeah, how things can work and your own perception of them before and then after. And it's, it's been interesting watching you go through that, I guess, you know what I mean? And watching you yeah. build. 
because I, I remember on the first show you were say, saying to me that, yeah, you, you were stressing a bit about it. And by the end of the first show in Geelong, I was just like, fuck off. Like, this is really good. You know what I mean? This is, I don't know why you doubted yourself, but I understand uh, the nature of that within the creative process. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's also like the first time I've ever really, I've ever really felt, fuck, is this good enough? Or this, yeah. isn't, or this is not good enough? You know, I had like, oh, is this good enough? Or yeah. I wonder if it's good enough. But I've never felt before like, fuck, I don't think this is good enough. Like the first time I had that, so it kind of freaked me out. Yeah. I'm like, if I don't think it's good, it must suck. But it's turned out to be to be great, which is, which is thank fuck, because a lot of people bought tickets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and as well, because, you, you know, you spent last four or five years building towards Death Threats Don't Scare Me. Mm. And, um, and yeah, you, you've, and you've, you've, you've really got a loyal fan base that are there to see you. And they trust you they, and they know you work hard. Yeah. So you didn't want to let them down. Yeah, I think there, there was an element. Yeah, I guess as, as every year goes by, it's like more... A bit more pressure. Because... More pressure cause it's like, because all the other shit I've done, it's like, well, fuck, got to top that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But oh, you definitely know. topped it, man. I was talking to a lot of fans outside the gig. Yeah. Um, everyone was like, holy shit, that is like so much. Like, he's come a long way quickly, even since the special, you know? That's so, cool. Well, um, yeah, I think I, I, it's the longest I've ever performed on stage like, was last night. I yeah, did like an yeah. hour 20 or something. Yeah. And like, you know, I've only ever really done an hour max yeah. but like 20 minutes extra is heaps because I, I think like like when I saw Jim Jeffries in Australia and I'm so psyched he's coming back in December I've got tickets he did two hours yeah. and it was no repeated stuff he did one part of the show where he got people to yell out like uh, what bit do you want to see again yeah. which I thought was cool because he's got such a massive back catalogue and he did like the the Oscar Pistorius bit again yeah. and I know that bit so well and it was cool seeing it again like oh he's gonna do that bit now he's gonna crawl on the floor and i thought that was cool yeah. uh but he did like two hours and that fucking blew my mind because i've never seen a comedian do that long oh i've seen steve hughes but yeah. that kind of regularly does like two hour hour and a half sets yeah. I, I think in, he, almost every time he performs and he's so good yeah i think he did like two and a half hours in Hobart. wow i remember the guy that had butted tony abbott Astro yeah. was sitting on the side of the stage while Steve Hughes was performing. <laughs> Hour in, he fell asleep. <laughs> and then said so Astro was just asleep on the stage while Steve Hughes did another hour. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think the yeah, well Steve Hughes always does that. I like even just like he has the material to do that, but even like just the physical labour of talking under hot lights for two and a half hours, that's so hard to do. It's intense. And especially with Steve, he's got so much worldwide like political agenda behind his material. He's really so smart. So he's a brilliant human, you know. And you can tell it's not just him running through material. He's also trying to fucking make a very angry, valid point to yeah. all the dumb people in the room. You know, yeah. like I think that's where he thrives as a comedian. It's, it's funny his stuff. His really heavy political stuff like sneaks up on you. Like I saw him at the comic lounge once, and he did like ten minutes of like really good, like like wide reaching crowd work and and material about just fucking uh, just seatbelt laws, like something that everyone can understand. It was all like haha, very silly. He wasn't really making any hard hitting points. And then out of nowhere, he's like he snuck that in, and then out of nowhere, he just starts talking about global politics and racism and religion and then and all these people are like wow fuck i love the seatbelt bit but this is like like people like holding onto their chairs going fuck this is so good but yeah. i don't know yeah <laughs> but uh he's it was really cool seeing him, him do that at a comedy club because especially i guess they weren't strictly there for him, for him specifically so to do that with with just a, a regular crowd was so cool to see he's just yeah. that great yeah, he's he's a grand, he's a Jedi. <clears throat> yeah. So he's like a, the you know one of the Jedi's of mm. Australian comedy. Yeah. Well, him and Jim lived together for a bit. Yeah, yeah, England, yeah. They lived in England and yeah. they got they got robbed together mm. and um, all that sort of stuff. I've yeah done a bit of research there in regards to those fellas and you know they're both like for for what they did in leaving comedy and going over to England and then Jim making the transition to America. It's um it's crazy to see how far they've gone. Mm. And also, like, I know main, maintain. Like, I guess that's you know Steve's a bit different, but Jim, you know, he maintains the fucking good old Aussie 
character on a worldwide platform, you know? Yeah, which is cool to see. I feel like he's really paving the way for not just Australians, but, like, just people that aren't from America. Yeah. Like, I feel like since Jim and a couple of other people, there's been, like, Jimmy Carr as well, who's kind of broken through outside of where they're from. Yeah. It's like now um, uh, the, the entertainment business and comedy is like, oh, fuck, there's talent outside of America? Shit. Yeah. And then, like, you know, Hannah Gadsby, she fucking exploded. Yeah, she's and done she, so well. She was a, literally, outside of Australia, no one. You know, yeah. like, in Australia, she's like Hannah Gadsby, but outside, she was fucking no one. And then, yeah. like, within, I don't know, I think she, within I think 12 she had, months. She's done Edinburgh and like she's done a bit over in England and stuff like that yeah 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 and then like with yeah within 12 months of her fucking Nanette show just touring live like Netflix was like fuck what's this get yeah. her up and then that was, that's, now it's cool like now other comedians in Australia are getting like little half hour Netflix things like I think Joel Creasy got something yeah and it's cool to see like the Netflix flight. and the entertainment industry just starting to be like oh there's people elsewhere that yeah. don't have profiles but are amazing yeah so and I remember you telling me that um, Australia is one of the only countries that have Netflix where we don't have a contract in place where we have to put on our own yeah. media yeah and so like I mean, correct me if I'm wrong so if Netflix wants to be in England it has to put on English shows where yeah, Australia, I so. Australia yeah. doesn't. Yeah, so I think that that most other countries except for Australia set up, okay, cool, Netflix, you can set up here, but if you want to make money out of our people, you also need to fund our entertainment industry, which makes sense because yeah. otherwise Netflix is so good and there's no competitors to it because yeah. it's just amazing. If you put it in England, but there's no English TV on it, all of a sudden every English person is only watching American shit. Yeah. And, and it's like... But Australia didn't do that, yeah. which is weird because Australia has done that with all of our TV channels, like television, radio has to create a certain percentage of Australian content. I think it's like 60%. Yeah. It's just to promote our culture and make sure that there's jobs for people yeah. in the entertainment industry. And that Australia doesn't just turn into America. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because it just would, because would, that's where well, the already, entertainment it, is. It already is, man. Like, mm. I mean, I remember when I was young, growing up, and 70% of... Uh, my um, classroom thought, you know, think as simple as like thinking that uh, the alphabet ends in Z instead of Z, and like yeah. li little things like that. But you, you, I've watched over the years. Like I was born in America, and, and I grew up in Australia, and I've been back a few times. It's been so interesting to watch um, globalism kick in the mm. older we get, and it comes from, I guess, how much American and English media we were fed yeah. um, in our early days. And we, it took a while to, for people to get behind Australian characteristics in our culture, you know, yeah. because we were kind of out of the picture and we mm. weren't connected. We're the furthest away from the rest of the world. So It's also interesting seeing the opposite of that, of like, because other countries are now coming into America and other entertainers from different countries, like, you know, like Jim Jeffries has a political talk show. Yeah. Five years ago, that never would have fucking happened. Yeah, an Australian like talking foreigner. politics in Yeah, America. a foreigner talking politics. That's crazy. But now there's a few. There's another guy. I forget his name. Um, He's like an English dude. Uh, Seth, maybe. Yeah, Seth is, is it John Oliver. Yeah, John, John Oliver John as well. He's really good. Yeah, I love yeah. him. And yeah, it's like that would ne like five years ago, that just wouldn't happen. Yeah. Um, and and Ronnie Cheng, he's Australian. He's yeah. on The Daily Show as well. He's killing it. Yeah, Ronnie's great. It's just got that classic anger. <laughs> hey, like I love the love his accent. I tried to do an impersonation, but I failed terribly. You know who does <laughs> a fucking really good impersonation? Elliot Loney does the yeah. nails. Ronnie right? oh, yeah. he does everyone really well though. And my it's mate, fucking so funny. My mate Tim Logan can do an exact fucking replica as well. <laughs> Maybe this is what Australian comedians are really doing in the background is just impersonating Ronnie Chang. <laughs> well, I, I think that's good, man. If people can impersonate you. You have a voice, yeah, and and not just like it's not because it's not just an accent. Like it, they're not doing a Malaysian accent; they're doing Ronnie Cheng's accent and and delivery. Yeah. So I feel like if if people can impersonate you, you're, like Jerry Seinfeld is a perfect example. Like yeah. no one delivers comedy like he does. Yeah, that's a very good point. It's a very good point. What's Elliot doing these days? Uh he's trying to get the nine A's up and running. I think uh, he's he's. Uh, I, he's working on a few things. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't, know, exactly, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know exactly what he has revealed. So I know he's doing a lot of different things, but I don't want to comment on what 
he's working on because I know, but I'm not sure if other people know. But just know he's working. Yeah. And uh, I think his main thing is he's trying to get the, the Nine A's animated series up and running. I know he has talked about that publicly, but he's got he's got his fingers in many pies. I can only imagine. Yeah. Oh, he's a great comedian. Mm. Um, well, what else have you been up to, man, since uh, we oh, last spoke? Since we last spoke, fuck. Um, <laughs> all sorts of shit. <laughs> um, I've been going through my own uh, sorts of shit with going through court back in Tassie. Yeah. <laughs> Sorting out my own life and yeah. fucking troubles I get myself into. But really just, you know, I've been getting ready for this. I did the reunion, the rap battle event. Um, pretty much I put on a battle between Dundee, who is like the technically the best Australian rap battler at the moment. I'd say so, yeah. And um, it was between him and my friend Cogs, who's a rapper from Perth that has, you know, quite a big fan base. So, But he'd uh, never battled before. <clears throat> he'd never battled before. So it was quite a, yeah, it was a Conor McGregor, um, Floyd Mayweather situation. Oh, yeah, within that, that culture, it was very Conor Floyd. Like, yeah. Like, fucking heavyweight veteran, Stru- always wins versus upstart young dude who's... Popular. Giving it a crack, popular mm. and confident. Exactly. And so that I just, great. I pretty much copied the exact promo campaign <laughs> yeah, from uh, Connor and Floyd and started Team Dundee and Team Cogs. All worked perfectly. Yeah. You know, um, it was quite a lot of healthy, healthy discussion in the hip hop scene. You know, a few people getting fucking, yeah, shut up. But at the mm. end of the day, um, the battle was really good and it just created healthy healthy attitude within the culture. Of and all those battles are online as well. If you want to watch them, you can see me and Greeley dying in the background and all the fucked up yeah, stuff. It's, um, it's on my YouTube channel, uh, THC TV. Um, it's a hip hop channel where I upload lots of different hip hop videos from all over the country, different artists, different rappers, as well as, yeah, this last event. I haven't put on battle <laughs> rap events. It's like events. Tasmanian world star hip hop. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was... Really good event, and I, I, you know, I've been amongst battle rap on and off for like ten years now, longer than ten. I did my first battle when I was sixteen. Fuck. But and I'm twenty nine now, so thirteen. But um, yeah, it's it's it was really good, and I, I took a couple of years off just because there's a lot. Of, there is a lot of negative aspects to battle rap when you're doing it all the time. And as a creator, you know, in a creative process, I was doing so many that mm. I never had any free time where I wasn't trying to bring someone else down in the rap battle. And, and also being brought down yourself as yeah, well. Yeah, that like, too. Cause, yeah, because yeah, I guess it can be... Well, it is kind of a negative... Mate, I've, had, I've cried after a battle. Yeah. And like, like I've, had a, I've had a friend say that I bagged out a mutual dead friend of ours mm. just to make himself look better and make me look like a shit cunt. Wow. Like he sacrificed disrespecting our dead friend. Yeah. And just, you know what I mean? And like I left after that and I was just like, what the fuck? Because I thought that guy was my mate, you know what yeah. I mean? And I was just like, ugh, this is horrible, you know? Like this is, I, I love the well, fun of it. that's you know? mean. Yeah, and, but at the same time... That's what you sign up for. You know, mm. you can, you can, it's, it is what it is. And I can't talk. I've said some really harsh shit. You know yeah. what I mean? And, you know, try and surprise people with some realness that will fucking maybe throw them off. You know what I yeah. mean? And I, that's exactly what he was trying to do. But um, in the sense of he was just trying to say something that he knew would upset me and throw me off, you know? Yeah. And, but it's, yeah, it's been... It really, I've been really loving the transition into stand-up because that doesn't have that negative aspect. There's a lot of similar aspects when it comes to performing. Mm. You work in the crowd, you know what I mean? You, 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 as you're performing, you're making eye contact with the crowd and delivering to them, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, but yeah, it just doesn't have the negative aspect yeah. as much. <laughs> no one's, it's, yeah, it's like you can write... 10 minutes of material and no one's going to write 10 minutes of material saying why you suck. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> it's like people will laugh or they won't laugh. That's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no one's going to like describe in rhyming form why you're a shit mate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's, that, that was a good event. And uh, other than that, I've just been making some music in the meantime. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a bunch of music that is going to come out. I just put out a song called Let Me Explain the other day. And uh, I've got a, another one I'm working on called Small Town Syndrome. And after, I'm fucking excited to hear this one. Yeah, is man. It, is it ready? To, have you recorded? It's, the song is done. I just need to film the video. And I have, I have like a concept oh, yeah. and an idea for the video. I need a few extras and a few locations to really pull it off because yeah. I want to make sure it's kind of 
really visually plays along with the concept of the song. Yeah. But it's just, a, yeah, it's about fucking living in Tassie, really. But if you go anywhere in Australia, Australia suffers from a lot of small town syndrome. You know, yeah. for a country out as big as we are, we have such a small population mm. that everywhere's a small town. Yeah. You know, so I, I have a feeling that one's going to hopefully connect with a lot of people and they're going to have a good laugh about it because it's shit we've got to deal with every day. Mm. Yeah. Sick. Sorry. Well, we got to go to this radio interview in a little bit. So let's do miscellaneous for the end. That's oh, sweet. We'll do one question and I've got a fucking banger. I've saved this one for you. Uh, for me then, or for them? <laughs> <laughs> both. Both. I, need, I know they need your help, man. Okay. So the headline of this email. Oh, by the way, if you want to send a question in, podcast at com is the email. Summarize it in the subject line. Tell me a story. Keep it short. And uh, I'll answer it if I think I can make it funny or it's entertaining. So the subject line for this one is, I fucked a 42-year-old married woman with kids. Okay. And uh, uh, so, hi, Lou. Before you judge, please read the whole thing. Too late, man. <laughs> You've been judged. You well, are I a dog. <laughs> uh, my name is Ben, and the woman's name is Sarah. Uh, you I was not know about Sarah. <laughs> I was out drinking with a friend in Sydney and we were bored, so we decided to visit a swanky hotel bar in North Sydney. While we were there, I saw saw the chick, I saw a chick and it looked like she wasn't waiting for anyone. So I sat next to her and we started chatting. She looked a lot younger than she was, probably early 30s. She was from the US and was there for a week on work. Something to do with her mediating contract (coughs) signatures or something. Though it took me a while to realize she was pretty obviously into me kept buying me drinks and barely talked to anyone else. Eventually, she invited me up to her room and we fucked a few times and I stayed the night. Bingo. Uh, the, ne- the next morning, I find out she's 42, married and with kids. How did you find out? Did she just tell you? Oh, by the way, I'm 42, married and I have kids. My <laughs> husband's going to murder you. <laughs> Was she not wearing a ring? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing she wasn't. Mm. Um, I is feel is like... that where the email ends? No, it was, there's more. Okay. So... I felt weird about it, but she said to me, we do this all the time while we are away from each other. Mm, sure. <laughs> or maybe you do and he's got no idea. So I thought, cool, everything's all good. However, looking back on it, I don't totally buy it. I'll get to why later. She was also loaded. She wanted me to show her around Sydney for a few days, so I was like, sure, why not? Every night we went out, she would buy everything and we'd go back to hers to fun. She even got me tickets... Got me and her tickets to see Jim Jeffries live at the Opera House. Well, fuck Score. yeah. You should marry her. She needs a divorce, man. You need a sugar mama who's yeah. in a great comedy. Um, things went awkward on her last night. We made plans to go out that night, but some friends I hadn't seen in ages invited me to a uni party. So you're like 20 something then. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, was, uh, that's what I was going to ask. Like, how old are yeah. you, bro? But yeah. Uni party, I'm not going to say your university. Uh, I waited till I got to her hotel to tell her why you're a dog. Hey, why did you go to her hotel? Hey, so uh, I'm here, but I'm not coming. See ya. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, I waited till I got to a hotel to, change, to tell her my change of plans, but I would still go out to dinner with her. Okay, we've been going out every night for the past week, so I didn't see that see it as that big of an issue. I was wrong. She started crying and yelled at me to leave, then started apologizing and yell at me, yelling at me over and over through text. I got the feeling that maybe this is not a thing she does all the time because of how she acted. Yeah, sounds mm. like she kind of fell in love with you a little bit and then realized, oh no, this isn't a romance thing. This was just a sex thing. Mm. Oh fuck, I cheated on my husband. I'm awful. Took it out on you. Mm. Seems like. Anyway, skip to now. We've made up and kept in touch. What? (laughs) Man, she must have some good pussy. She's recovered from those two kids. (laughs) We've talked for a bit and I told her it'd probably be best if we didn't go down that road again. And she's planning on coming back to see me at the end of the month. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just as mates. You and your 42-year-old platonic friend. Nothing's going to happen. Cool, bro. (laughs) I have the feeling that it might happen again if she tries to come on to me. Does this make me a bad person? Hey, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> I have no idea to, what to do. I need some guidance. Cheers. Can't have a shit one. Okay. Yeah, man. 
Look, you weren't a bad person until you found out. Yeah. Then you began to become a bad person. And, um, I mean, the rule is, man, like, how how long do they hang out for? A week. A week! What are you doing, bro? Every night, a week. Every night, a week, bro. You got two nights before you're entering the danger zone. Yeah. And then... then She's fallen in love with you, man. That or just general, like, attachment. You know what I mean? If anyone lies in bed fucking having fun for two days and then... Goes away, oh, you know, five days and then goes yeah. away. It's just instant. Like, I've had this comfort for five. If I get really stoned for five days and feel really comfortable and nice, and then I have no weed, I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, really, that's all she's probably done. Like, and you'll probably learn this as you get older. But, um, yeah, I, I don't think she'd fallen in love. Maybe. But you were essentially in a relationship for a week. Yeah, yeah. Going out every night. Yeah. Every night. Like, that's a bit too much, bro. You know, people in relationships don't go out every night, you know? No so, <laughs> like, you know, she would have been like, oh, he's coming out every night with me. And, and then, yeah. And I, I, who knows about her, her husband or what the deal is there. Did she have a ring? I mean, let us know if she had a ring. Yeah, I think here's here's <coughs> how you... You need to find out if it actually is a thing that they do. If it is, fine, whatever. But only see her once when she comes back. See her once, have fun, don't see her again. And then she'll come back, see her again, that's it. Yeah. Set up your boundaries because otherwise every... Sounds like she travels to Australia a lot for work. Otherwise, every time she comes to Australia... You're going to get hit up. Hey, do you have a spare week of your life to hang out with some chick you're not going to see again for six months? It's like, fuck that, man. I don't think you want to get involved. Yeah, no. And I think, yeah, that's as well like an international fuck buddy with expectations. It just, you know what I mean? Yeah, Yeah, if it becomes a regular every six months we date for a week. And we're you're my we're boyfriend and girlfriend for a week. That's fucking and weird. And she'll rely on it, and then she'll get more attached, and then she'll be like, "Hey, so I'm gonna leave my husband for you." And yeah. you'll be like, "I'm in uni, man." Yeah, and this will keep going on and on and on until you're like 29 and she's 50. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, "I don't want to be like 42 is kind of cool now when you're in your early 20s." It's a good story. You know, 50. It's like you don't want to deal with her arthritis, man. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, set up the walls, man. I'd break away. It's not worth it. You've got your story. That's it. That's all you mm. need. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, I, I'd say bow, bro. You know, just give her, send her a message, and say, look, I respect you, but as a parent and as a person that's signed a contractual agreement to their relationship, yeah. I need to respect that you have a husband. And yeah, you don't want you that know, on your conscience either. That's like it, potentially man. ruining a family. Exactly, bro. Like that shit happens all the time. It destroys people's lives. You know what I mean? I understand a week of getting your dick wet, but at the end of the day, if she's got kids, fuck that, man. Yeah. That's fucking, you know, you don't want to fuck with kids' lives. Like, man, if I was young and fucking, my mum was 42 and some fucking 20 year old uni student started yeah. pegging her, it'd fucking ruin my day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least be a shit couple of hours. Yeah, for sure. No, I'm so not. get your dick out of it, man. <laughs> hey, stop! Put it away. <laughs> All right, that's it. The podcast. We got to go. We got to do a radio interview or something. Um, but uh, thanks for listening, guys. I will see you again next week. Hopefully, it'll be filmed. But I don't know. No promises. We'll see. Uh, and the tour continues. Come and see me. You, if you're listening to this on Sunday, come and see me on Perth on Monday night. Uh, we're also going to Brisbane. That one's going to be filmed. And uh, the tickets are close to selling out. I'd love to fill that one. It's really big. It's going to be an electric uh, show. We're also going to... Where else are we going? Adam? Gold Coast. Gold Coast. Newcastle. Newcastle. Sydney. Sydney. Sydney Wollongong. Wollongong. We're going everywhere, man. I don't know where I'm going. Tour manager does. Yeah. <laughs> Google it. You can't. All right. <laughs> I'll see you at the shows. Have a shit one. Peace.